Hello Linux fans, Rob here and welcome to Linux Quest. Well, if you haven't had your fair share of Ubuntu 17.10 Beta 2 videos, I thought I would throw another one your way with Ubuntu Budgie 17.10 Beta 2. And I chose this because this is really a nice combination. It's kind of like a Reese's peanut butter cup where you have your chocolate and your peanut butter and they taste great together. Well, maybe, maybe that's not the best analogy, but nevertheless... Budgie Desktop has really come into its own, and with Ike's full-time work on it, it's just become such a nice option in desktop uh, for your Linux operating system. Now, Ubuntu, when it's released, and it's got lots of support, and, you know, it's going to be a stable operating system. So, again, again a great combination. I want to point out a couple of things here, and I'm not going to go super in-depth in everything in this video, uh, because we're not too far away from the official release. I do want to point out uh, here within the welcome screen something that I thought was really nice. You've got all your usual links here, and then you've got a large link here for install software. This does not just take you right over to your software center. This actually gives you options for your budgie applets, which are right up here. Or you could go right over to the software center. And then you have Snap Apps and Flatpak Apps actually used the Snap app of the Simple Screen Recorder to do this video. So, nicely done here. Also, I want to jump over here to um, a friend of the channel, Earl, sent over a couple of screenshots of his Solus Budgie setup. And his point being is that the Budgie desktop is, you know, a desktop that you can really go in and configure and give a, you know, a, a varied look to. So he sent over some screenshots here I want to share with you. It was very timely. Plus, it gave me the idea that if you've got a decked out customized desktop that you want to share, uh, and I can work it into a video like we've done here, I think it's awesome, awesome to share that so that folks can see how extremely cool the Linux operating system is. All right, so Earl did one here with a conky widget with the panel at the bottom with some transparency. And I'm going to show you how you set all of that up and where you go to make these changes here in this video. So nicely done there. Just a clean look. Nice icon set. So nicely done. Conky widget. And then the next one, you've got the panel up top. And uh, again, very clean, transparent. Just a nice, clean look. So well done. All right, the other thing I want to do here is we will quickly go through a rundown of some of the what's new in Ubuntu 17.10. And this should be in most or all spins, but you're going to have some variation depending on which desktop you choose. So with that, uh, quickly you've got the Wayland Display Server by default with optional Xorg Server. Uh, I think it's going to be MESA 17.2 in place, Linux Kernel 4.13. Better hardware support, that's always good, and that's part of the kernel, the newer kernel. Uh, Ubuntu server installer is going to be new. Uh, Bluetooth improvements with a new Blue Z, uh, upgraded to Network Manager 1.8. GDM is going to be the default display manager. Uh, EXT4 encryption will be in place. Window control buttons back to the right top corner, and that's in there because if you're using Ubuntu with the new default GNOME desktop, these window buttons here will be up in the right hand corner as opposed to where they were in Unity on the left. But you can change that not only within the GNOME desktop, but you can change that within Budgie. So we'll take a look at that as well. All right. And uh, this is always welcome. Better GPU support and including, included with that 4K support, high DPI, and multi monitor improvements. All right. So I want to cover a few things. I'm going to go ahead and just take this off of the desktop here for now. All right, again, not going to go super in-depth in everything, but I do want to cover some of the highlights. Uh, first of all, let's not forget the Raven menu. So here you've got access to various applets that you set up within this menu, and then you have settings, and this will launch you quickly into the Budgie desktop settings. We're going to cover that, but you also have notifications. Now this is an area where really things have cleaned up with this Raven panel, and the Budgie Desktop just, again, continues to improve. And part of that is within the Budgie Desktop settings where you have everything nice and neat and categorized with everything here on the left. So this is where you can get into all of those customizations like we showed you with Earl's setup on his desktop. So you have style and desktop, fonts, windows, 
top panel, your top panel here, or you could create new panels. You could have a panel on the top and the bottom or left and right. Um, so you can get into things like your widgets and your widget themes, your icon packs, your cursors. Um, maybe you don't like this dark look here. You just want to change that to light. One click. So um, options there. Desktop icons. You could choose whether to show those or not. Your home directory. What you want to show on your desktop. Fonts. So here we have the Ubuntu fonts. Sans regular. Uh, you could also download, if, if it helps you with your documents and things like that, you could install the Microsoft window fonts. And I know that's sacrilege, but you could. Uh, under Windows here, this is where we get into the button layout. So if you're one who came from Unity and you prefer that on the left because you, you're used to that, simply one click, change that over to the left hand side as opposed to the right. Uh, top panel, now this is where you get into quite a few settings and this is an area where you want to be somewhat careful. So here you've got all of your applets and you'll see that highlight right there and then you have settings. So the settings actually control what we're going to see in the panel, and we'll change a few things so that you can see how that works. Let's go back over to applets. Now, some of these applets will have additional settings. So if we choose Budgie Menu, which is your drop-down menu here, you'll notice now that we could show like Menu. So by default, it was turned off, and I had turned it on earlier. So there you see it right up here, and there you don't. That'll keep things nice and clean. Uh, you could also change the look of the icon. You could go into compact mode. So here we see your main categories on the left. So as we go to each category, you'll see the listing of applications. Maybe you want to keep that really simple. So you go to compact mode. Once that's on, you're just going to have a long list of applications. You know, you may be a user who in, you know appreciates just a quick search. And so from here, you could start typing CH for Chrome and you'll see the Chromium web browser, which is, by the way, the default browser pre-installed on Ubuntu Budgie. All right, so you've got that option. Show headers. Actually, we're going to turn that back on, compact mode back on. Show headers or rollover mouse, so lots of options there. Now, some of the applets will not have additional settings. And so as you pop down, you'll see no settings. Uh, night light places. Now here we have some options. You could show places, expand, show removable drives. Um, you know, and this is places right here. So you've got quick access. So I like having this set up. So we've got it here in Plank where you could jump into files, but it's nice to have it here because if your mouse is already over here, you could just quickly drop down into one of those folders notifications, status indicator. Now the area here in applets is starting to expand and really improve. You've got night light, for example, uh, when you're working at night to remove the blue hue that you see coming from your monitor, things like that. So these are starting to become really nice high-end applets. And I also love the way that these applets, for the most part, with the exception of this simple screen recorder, uh, icon here, but the applets, the general applets, are very uniform and they don't, you know, there's not one that looks totally out of place compared to the others. All right, let's move over here to uh, settings and we're going to have a little fun. So this is where you could control your top panel. Let's say you wanted that on the left. Now you'll see here because of the clock and a few other things, it's not exactly lined up the way it should be, but you could go in and change that by doing various things. For now, I'm going to take it back to the top and just illustrate a few other things. So maybe you wanted to increase the size. Now you'll notice here that nothing else has changed. The applets have remained the same size, so on and so forth. But later you could go in and you know increase font size and things like that so that you'd see a larger clock as an example. You could also choose to automatically hide. That could be intelligent hide or automatic. The next one on the list here is transparency. Now this is what Earl used in his customized desktop. So you could turn that on and now you see here a nice transparent panel. But you can take it one step further. We've got this shadow underneath here. Uh, we could turn that off and now it just looks like a row of applets with a clock and a button over here. So lots of options for sure. You could turn on dock mode. 
uh, things like that. And you can create a new panel and add to that panel whatever applets you so choose. So let's say you didn't want to use this plank. You could add another panel at the bottom and add various applets to that panel and, and just use everything from down there. There's just lots of things that you can do to really make this operating system slash desktop your own and use it in a way that works best for you, which is what it's all about. Last on the list here, we've got auto start. And I've turned off a few things. I left plank. Uh, welcome screen that would be one that's in the list I turn that off uh, but you can also turn that on from the welcome screen link there so nicely done under the desktop settings now we're gonna go back over here to the Raven menu one more time also want to point out this is where you can go to shut down restart things like that lock and then again this will launch you right into settings all right some of these applets up here, you got Bluetooth. Some of them make you know perfect sense. You'll see from the icon sound settings, and that'll launch you right into uh, the ability to control all of your sound settings. Now this brings us up to another settings panel that has been improved, and this comes from the GNOME side of things. You know, it's hard enough if you're making a switch from another operating system, be it Mac or Windows, over to Linux. You know, that's a big change for a lot of people. And then, you know, you've got the area of where do I go to control everything? Well, that's where this has been, I think, a huge improvement over the previous settings options that you had within the GNOME desktop. Now, you'll see here, you got main categories, again, on the left, similar to the budgie settings. And so you can quickly go in and navigate everything from your Wi-Fi connections, Bluetooth, your network settings. Uh, online accounts. It's all right here and nicely done. We're going to go ahead and expand this. Um, and you'll see that there will be additional categories. So here you see the arrow to the right telling you if you go to devices, you're going to have a whole nother list or another window that will pop up. And this is where you'll go for printers, keyboard, mouse, displays, things like that. Uh, details of the system, same thing. Now you know, I'm not going to spend time with everything here. I just want to bullet it down to this. Uh, if we continue to see these kinds of improvements, I, I'm of the opinion that you're going to see uh, more people finding it easier to set up and use their Linux operating system, which should help and improve growth. You know, I have no numbers or statistics to back that up, that's just my analogy and my thought. The easier we make things, I say we, I'm not a developer, but the easier developers make things uh, work for new and existing users, I just think the more we'll see coming into the community, which is awesome. All right, so have I missed anything? Let's give a quick rundown here. I want to talk about Plank here at the bottom. There's a few settings there. So let's go to, and I've turned off all my categories. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I'll tell you what else we'll do. We'll go to the software center so you can see that. So here's where you'll go to search for software or go by category for the software. And this is a really nice software center. Let's, uh, let's see if there's more. No, I thought maybe you could click on that. So if you go into audio video, for example, you're going to see all these various categories. And if you click on one, you'll see a description with photo. Typically, you're going to see photos. Of course, I choose the one with no screenshot. Uh, but you'll see ratings and everything. It's really nicely done. And so again, if you're someone that's new, uh, you can go in and figure out what does what. And that used to be a problem uh, with with uh, Linux software was you just you really didn't know or understand exactly what it was and what it did without a lot of research and uh, searching. Sorry something went wrong, that's because you're a beta. But uh, again, you'll be able to find uh, a large assortment of software, again, with all the support behind Ubuntu. Uh, long list here of what's installed. All right, moving on, let's go over to, and I wanted to, let's just, it's going to be alphabetical. So we're going to go into Plank, and again, this is here at the bottom, and Plank Preferences. Now here you've got some more options. We could change the theme or position. Now by default, with Ubuntu Budgie, it's set up on the left. I just happen to like it on the bottom, so we'll put that back. 
Uh, we can change things such as the alignment. Maybe we want that to be over on the start side, for example. Put that back on the center. And we could also increase the size. Let's get ludicrous with it, just to give you an idea. And you'll notice too, as I scroll over the various icons, you've got icon zoom. So that's where you would go to toggle that on or off. And that's something uh, in the past, as I've shown various plank settings, people have have uh, commented in the video, hey, where did you turn on zoom? So that's where that is, icon zoom. Next up here is behavior. And so we could change things. So we could say, uh, hide the dock, don't hide the dock. Um, dodge, maximize window, window dodge, dodge active window, auto hide and telehide. Um, I'm going to go to dodge, maximize window. And what that means is when you have a full window open, this is going to move out of the way. It's going to hide. So we're going to keep that on. Actually, let me go back to appearance because that looks ridiculous. We'll take that back down to say 42 or 40. Yeah, 42. That'll be fine. Let's go back to behavior. Uh, you can show unpinned, restrict to workspace. So if you've got multiple workspaces set up, um, you could choose, hey, uh, this will show up on workspace one, but it will not show up on my other workspaces, for example. And then we have docklets. So here we could add, so for example, if we wanted to put a clock down here, we could just drag that down and bam, now we have a clock. Same thing with trash and clippy CPU monitor. Plank's really, I think, been very stable and it's just one of those uh, features of the desktop that's nicely done. So overall, looking forward to the final release on this. This is certainly a great option, especially if you, you know, you love Unity and, but you're not crazy about GNOME, it's just not your cup of tea. I would say definitely check this out. Give it a spin if you're not afraid to do a little distro hopping. You got a live desktop. Let's quickly go in and look at some of the wallpapers. This may change. Uh, let's see here. You got some from uh, some the previous release, but not a lot here. You could go in and choose your own pictures or colors. Um, same with the lock screen. You could change that out. Well, I'm going to wrap it up. I kind of went a little longer than I intended to. I hope this is helpful to you. As always, I appreciate you watching, and we will check you later.